Hello everybody and thanks for tuning in. This is a little bit of a custom build that I worked on and um, it's they got the GB130 frame from Gearbest which is a very close copy or is a copy of the uh, MRP130 and the reason why I wanted to try this is it's a micro which you know I love but it also has a full-size camera, CCD camera that we can use in here and in my case it's a Runcam Swift and I've completely hosed the settings on this, so in the flight footage you're going to see lots of oranges uh, because I've tinkered and tinkered. Um, but this one is a lot of fun, and uh, let's go through what we have here. We've got the uh, red bottom 1306 4000 kV motors. We've got some dirty dowel props there. And inside is the all-in-one um, HGLRC uh, PDB flight controller OSD and current sensor. And, uh, unfortunately, there's no build video because when I wired that up, I apparently didn't hit record or something else happened. So no footage there. Got my standard uh, Little B ESCs. And I think this is probably the last time I'm going to use the standard Little B 20 amps or Little Bs. I think I need to start investigating some of the current generation of ESCs and see how they perform. I've stuck with these primarily because if I kill one in flight or if one goes bad... I don't have a bunch of different ESCs I have to keep an extra one of in order to keep these different vehicles in flight. So I've kind of stuck with those on my own builds. Uh, you can see I've got my antennas for my Spectrum satellite sticking out. It's wedged underneath there. And you can see the profile on this is pretty low because there's an extra part of the stack that is missing because I didn't have to add a PDB to this. It's all included in that one board. Around back, we've got our VTX, which, oh, what did I use in there? This is the uh, FT951. It's only a 22 channel receiver, but I went with this because uh, in a budget build, it fit really well. Um, it was only $14. Um, so, not going to have race band or all the channels available to you, but for a backyard flyer like me, works just fine. Uh, and then I had some LEDs. I don't know where I've got these. They were in one of my storage bins, so I decided to put one on there. And then we've got the uh, UFO FPV antenna. Um, from Banggood, which that thing works just fine. I think that was like four or five dollars too. Um, I haven't noticed any problems with signal uh, with that. So if you're looking at a budget build, uh, you might want to look up this uh, antenna and see what it's run currently running for and maybe get that. The one thing you do need to uh, prepare for if you build something um, with these 1306 motors is the motor shaft is not as long as it is on other motors. You cannot use a full size nut on these to get to secure your props, especially if you're using the, the nylon lock nuts. Oftentimes the nylon lock nuts that come with the motors, they only have nylon at the very top of the thread. So you've got to get pretty much the entire bolt down on there before you start to get to the mechanism that locks it into place. And those just won't fit on here. As you can see with these low profile nuts that I got from Oh, who would I get that from? I believe I got these from Ready-Made RC. It was either them or Rotor Geeks, but I think it was Ready-Made RC. So you're going to need low-profile lock nuts in order to use these props. There could be you know, lower-pitched props that aren't, don't have as the uh, hub height that will work just fine. Um, so the ones that come stock with these motors are not going to work. Um, one thing about this frame that I did not like, and you're not going to be able to see it because I've actually got the frame rotated a bit. If you can see this part and this part here, that I believe is actually where the battery strap is supposed to go through there. But that is so narrow, uh, you can't even get a 3S on top of that. That battery strap would have to bow out and come around it. So I just ran the battery strap through and completely disregarded um, those cuts. Now maybe those cuts are just for weight loss. I'm not saying that it's one way or another, but normally when you see these frames and you have something cut into them here and here, that's for battery strap. That doesn't work in this case unless you're running like 2S, which I don't think you're going to want to do. As for the board in here, I, I enjoyed wiring that up. That was nice and easy. It really streamlines everything. It keeps your profile nice and low. And um, one commenter, I think it was uh, Matt or Mike Mueller, he has seen where friends of his that race these have seen where the OSD has reset uh, with high amperage draw. I haven't had that experience, but I'm only running 3S. So you, you might take that into consideration when you're, you're looking at this board. I haven't had anything other than one time I lost video, but I couldn't say why that was. Um, I did have a 
buzzer right here on the side, but I accidentally that got ripped off in a crash. And then it ripped the uh, Voltage Plus solder pad right with it. Uh, there are several different versions of this board out. And I think if I were to do this again, I would not get the one with the XT60. I would get the one just with the solder pads, which is version 3.1. Um, I think Banggood is now only selling version 3.1. And I, that's a good thing in my mind. Because... Um, especially how I've got things. If I were to do this again, I would rotate this tab where it would be on the side rather than on the back um, because obviously that limits the depth of the battery that you can fit down there. It hasn't really caused a problem because I've been using a lot of 450s on this and I get about two to three minutes of flight time, which I'm okay with. If you wanted to use a larger battery, you know, an 800 or 1000 milliamp battery, that's going to get in your way. It's going to give you too much front weight. Now, before I show you the flight footage, I think I need to talk a little bit about the OSD. The OSD, OSDs in general aren't something that I oftentimes really use. I've gotten a few uh, quads that have OSDs, and I thought they were all fine and well, but I didn't really see their usefulness. I thought it was something more for fixed wing or for aerial photography, something of that nature. But I found a use that I really like for OSD, and that is PID tuning. I've said this before, but I don't tune very fast because I go in very small increments, and I do go to one axis at a time and one part of our PID tuning at a time. So it takes me many flights before I have a tune that I'm very happy with. But with an OSD, I could take a couple laps, see what I see, bring it in real quick, disarm, use the uh, sticks to navigate the OSD menu into the PIDs, make a couple settings, save, exit that, arm, back up again. So in a matter of a two or three minute flight, I might have three or four different PID changes. Whereas previously, I would just fly the whole pack just because it was fun rather than fly a little bit and disconnect, bring it in, connect it up to a computer or have a computer out there with me. I could just use the OSD in this case. And that, that is a huge benefit. Now, I also recognize that once you get it tuned, you don't fuss with it. So that's a temporary usefulness. Um, the other usefulness that I can see in OSD, it has to do with a lot what uh, Joshua Bardwell does when he's doing battery testing in flight to where you can get some of that feedback immediately. And, and you can get an idea if your batteries are any good or not. Um, I was a little bit surprised. Um, one of my favorite batteries, it's not my top favorite battery, but one of my favorite batteries didn't perform quite as well as I thought it would. So I need to stick with using that particular battery with a lighter setup. And now we're speaking about setups. This came in only nine grams lighter than that. And this is the Diatone Crusader 130, which I was not very pleased with. Uh, I thought you know, at the time I bought it, it was, what, $225? And I didn't think it performed very well. I thought I was in the top 30% of the throttle arc just to cruise it around, let alone if you wanted to do some, some hard throttle. And uh, this hasn't gotten much use. I tried three-bladed props on it, which helped a little bit, um, but just not enough. So I think in the case of the Diatone uh, Crusader 130, you're better off, if you like that frame, building it up yourself and using different motors. I just don't think these motors are very good. Uh, at least that's the conclusion I'm drawing because we have essentially very similar quads, um, at least in weight, which is a big performance. Um, and this one is so much more fun to fly. So if you're looking at this and you don't want to build, it's a decent option but don't expect it to perform like this. Uh, you can run 4S on this, and it will probably perform more similarly to this. Um, but, of course, this is going to be running on 3S, and then you're running 4S, so back and forth. And these two are very, very similar uh, in frame design, and, and the parts are, of course, Diatone has their own proprietary parts. But you can see my stack for my custom uh, 130 over here on the right is uh, quite a bit smaller and I, I always like low profile because when I fly a route through around things, uh, it gives me less opportunity to get snagged by a ghost branch or something and come down. Now, this antenna itself is too tall. I would like to find some good quality short antennas, you know, those little stubby guys. But I do often worry about, you know, that being a point of weakness to where if you do catch that antenna, the short stubby one, it's going to definitely tear off a connector on one end or another. But I'm willing to give that a shot. Let's put this aside now. So I am going to roll some flight footage next. I think the one other thing I have to do is apologize because there isn't a build video. But I'm going to get a bit of a do-over in that regard. Because GearBest has sent me 
a GB130, the kit form that they have on their site, which is very similar to what I've already built. Now this one's not going to have an OSD, and this one's not going to have the slim profile because it is going to require a PDB, but um, you'll get to see a build of this and how all the bits and pieces fit together if you're looking for build videos, which I've received several comments that people have that are looking to get into the hobby really enjoy the build videos because it helps give them confidence that they'll be able to do it too and I fully believe that I think if you watch a few build videos and you go slow you take your time you can do this you don't have to have expensive equipment you don't have to have years of knowledge just go slow take your time double check your work okay I'm gonna roll that FPV footage uh, again, it's going to have an orange tint to it because I have messed up the settings. I need to plug in the OSD cable on that camera and reset that thing. Uh, if you have any questions or comments about this, please leave those in the section down below. Uh, if you're looking for something similar, I have something in the pipeline coming. Um, a little sneak peek is I, I worked with a designer on a frame. I had a few frame ideas and my time um, tinkering with the different applications you can use to draw up frames, uh, I, I became very frustrated. I, I enjoy building and flying. I found I don't enjoy the design aspect. Uh, so I worked with a designer, and uh, we went back and forth, and we made um, a 130 millimeter quad that's an X that uh, I, I think I am going to enjoy it, and that will be coming shortly to the channel. I've got the frame and all the parts, and I need to get caught up on what I'm doing here on the channel. Um, so... This is a good option right now, but there might be a better one coming. We'll see. Hopefully the design ideas didn't have a negative impact. Uh, so enjoy the footage, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, everybody.